Hello everyone. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a Whiskey Wednesday, it might be a, like a Whiskey Monday or a Whiskey Tuesday. We'll see, I've got quite a lot of things recorded uh, for you all to view over the next couple of weeks. Not sure when I'm bringing them out. Going to keep it short. <clears throat> we are here to talk about this. Now anyone who is a big whiskey nerd and just loves learning and reading about all kinds of whiskey, <clears throat> about two years ago you would have seen the launch of something called Hey Club which is a, a more sort of naturally square object than this. It's a grain whiskey produced by Cameron Bridge Distillery and despite the fact that it's just a grain whiskey, it was sponsored by Mr. David Beckham. And as a result of that, marketing exploded, it had billboards and it had TV adverts and magazine campaigns. It was everywhere doing absolutely everything. And to keep the brand a bit fresh and a bit alive, they have just released this, which is called the Clubman. Now, my hay club knowledge is a little bit shaky. I remember having to sell it two years ago, and luckily everyone who tried it enjoyed it, so they bought one. But I believe that was matured in a standardised bourbon barrel, a rejuvenated bourbon barrel, and I think there was a little bit of sherry oak in there. I think. Not too sure. It was two years ago. And this is an on-the-spot review, so I've not really done any background reading on it. Um, this one, in comparison, is boasting the fact that it's matured exclusively in bourbon casks. Matured in bourbon casks. Still a grain whiskey, still 40%, and it has this more kind of brick-like quality to it. Possibly stolen, stolen, possibly interpreted from the Nika Whiskey Company, because their uh, Nika from the barrel is like in a really squat, short bottle. Anyway, we're going to crack on with the review, because I remember saying a couple of weeks ago that this is quite an important review for the year. And I've pre-poured some, in my nice little glass, and we're just going to crack on with it. I think anyone who is probably watching this review knows what Hay Club is. And there's a huge argument amongst whiskey professionals and people who just want to try whiskey. So, I don't know, we'll delay the tasting a minute. So, for those who want to get into whiskey, awesome. Welcome to the club, or hopefully if you enjoy it. And... There's great whiskies, great single malts, great blends that can get you into whiskey. But marketing companies, big branding companies, they always want an extra edge. And I've said numerous times that grain whiskey is a market that should be tapped into. And I've been saying that for about four years. And the fact that this thing, well, the original version of this came out about two years ago is another thing. Compass Box have been on it. William Grant's have been on it with some of their great whiskey products like Hedonism and Gervin. But now Diageo have joined the foray. And for the last 24 months or two years, Haeckel's been doing pretty well. Like, good steady sales. Uh, the Christmas it came in to the market, it absolutely exploded. And a lot of people would say that, you know, a blend can get you into whiskey. Or Ockentoshin or Glen Goyne can get you into, into a single malt whiskey. Grain whiskey is kind of like a Scottish bourbon. You can't call it a bourbon because it's not made in America. But it's made from wheat or corn, normally. Maybe a bit of rye sometimes. It's distilled in column stills, like a bourbon would be, and is matured in mainly bourbon barrels, like 99.9% .9 of the time it's bourbon cask. There are some sherry cask whiskies from grain distilleries, you won't see a lot of them because that's pretty niche. Uh, but anyway, let's crack on and see if it can get people into whiskey. Um, I've no idea of the age of the thing because it's a non-age statement. You're going to assume that there's probably some quite young stuff in it, but there's probably some quite old stuff in it too just to balance it out and make it seem like they're not trying to just, you know, force feed you young whiskey. Um, it's probably not natural colour. It's probably the same length as Lagavulin 8. They shouldn't need to colour it, but they have, sadly. Um, it looks like any whiskey, really. It's, it's extremely light in colour. It looks like a, a lot of single cask bourbon uh, barrel whiskey. I've never done this on camera before, but the body itself, because you should always examine body as well, if you've got the time to, it's very light. It just falls down the side of the glass. It's not particularly thick. It runs down there. I'm going to assume it's also chill filtered, just because it's a, it's a huge pro or will be a huge product. So let's give it a smell. <clears throat> it smells like ice cream, and you're probably all getting bored of hearing vanilla and coconut by now. It smells like vanilla, it smells like coconut, it smells like ice cream, there's kind of a, a peanut butter toffee thing going on with it too. But it does smell like a grain whiskey, and I've touched on this briefly before with blended whiskey. Um, 
and some grey stuff too. You do get that slightly plasticky note that uh, grain whiskey will give no matter what the quality of the whiskey, how good it is. Grain whiskey always has that slightly plastic quality. I'm not sure where that comes from. It's probably due to the distillation methods. Um, so yeah, it smells like a bourbon, but it's not bourbon, it's a grain. So yeah, it smells quite welcoming. It smells quite sweet and a little bit indulgent. You know, you think toffee and peanut butter and caramel and vanilla, wonderful dessert options. Taste. <clears throat> the actual taste itself you'd be confused if to thinking there's actually no alcohol in it it's probably the lightest thing I've ever come across in my entire life um, there's no wonderful adjectives to describe it you know it doesn't glide it doesn't flow across your mouth or anything like that it's just gentle um, which will appeal to people who want to get into whiskey. The finish reminds me of drinking bourbon with ice in it. So you got those kind of lovely, you know, decadent flavours. But it feels like they've been dialed down it's been subjugated to dilution as a result of having ice in it. But yeah, the, the finish reminds me of drinking bourbon on ice. Hmm. So, I was expecting this thing to divide a lot of people. Uh, this is my friend's bottle. It is not mine. He's quite happily lent it to me. So thank you very much, Craig. It's not designed. This is important. It's not designed for the for people who buy Ardbeg and Cash Strength Abalore and Lagavulins and you know single cask Dal Ewan twenty three year olds from you know a couple of years ago. It's not designed for people who. This phrase is going to be a bit annoying. It's not designed for people who are big into whiskey, and I don't mean that as an offensive thing. If you want to get into whiskey. This can certainly get you into it. I can totally see why. Oh, well, price. Uh, I think the recommended retail price is about £25, but my friend bought this for £18 on offer in a, a supermarket around the corner. So it's super cheap. Does it taste like an £18 whiskey? Yes, it does. What you want for 18 quid, it pretty much gives you. It's not an overbearing amount of flavour. I'd almost go as far to say that the flavour is extremely relaxed, almost too relaxed. Nothing particularly comes out of you in a large way. But then again, it's not designed for me. Um, if you like vodka, if you like gin, if you like tequila, and if you want to get into Scotch whiskey, bear in mind this is a single grain, it's not a blend, it's not a malt, it's not a single cask, it is a grain whiskey. If you want to get into it, it's probably quite a good streak to get, you know, a good way to get into it. Would I recommend this to a friend who wants to get into whiskey? Probably not. That's a personal thing. I'd probably recommend like Johnny Walker Black or Alcantosh 12 or Cardu or Bourbon even. You know, I find a lot of my friends who started drinking Bourbon end up at Scotch. It's just kind of like a natural pathway you develop into. So yeah that's it. It's It smells quite nice. It's got a decent, it's got a, well decent, it's got a goodish nose. The taste is super light. It's almost like the whiskey has evaporated out of your mouth and has gone to another planet. You don't get a lot of alcohol at all with it. And then uh, the finish itself is like drinking bourbon on ice. So that's a very specific flavour. Score. I've said it numerous times already. It's not designed for me. And it's probably not designed for a lot of people who watch this channel, who watch numerous other whiskey review channels, who <clears throat> read whiskey magazines and all that kind of thing. It's probably not for you and me. Um, so based on the fact that I'm trying it, and it's my personal perception of this whiskey, I'm going to give that a four. 
It's a personal thing, it's a 4 out of 10. Um, it's no harsh feelings or anything like that, it's just an honest perception. Do I think that that is the best they could have done with the stock? No. Um, if you run Cameron Bridge Distillery, and grain distilleries aren't picturesque little village postcards, they are industrial estates. Hard hats, hard, you know, steel toe cap boots, walking between the lines, that kind of deal. And obviously this is something that's going to be developed into a huge range of whiskey. And I'm trying not to rant, because there's a lot to talk about, and I'm, I'm not being brutal to it or anything like that. I'm trying to be ne as neutral as possible. It's great for the introduction, you know, a good introduction to whiskey. It's kind of what that is. It's not for the long-term whiskey drinker. Long-term, long time. If you've been drinking whiskey for like five to ten years, this probably isn't for you. I'd say it's worth trying just to get a perception. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's the best they could have done with the stock. Neither is the regular hate club, in my opinion, which I, I think this is actually better than the regular hate club. This has a more interesting approach to everything. There's more flavour there. The original hate club, to me, it just tastes like a vodka. There wasn't much going on with it. Um, so yeah, that, that's my score. And you're more than likely going to see quite a lot from these guys in the future. Um, I'm not sure if they could do a single cask hate club. Maybe, we'll see. Um, but an important part, and if you're watching this, Mr. Beckham, then it's just an honest view. You know, I do these things to be honest. Joe is extremely honest. I'm carrying on that perception. Give it a try. If you find it in a bar and it's, you know, about three quid short or 250, something like that, give it a go. See what you think. Um, but when I heard about this and saw the press release and all that kind of thing, it was noted on the press release that it does drink well straight. Well is a strong word in my mind. It drinks okay straight. But it's designed to be mixed. So, as a result... Like I said, it is my friend's bottle, it's not mine, so I won't use too much. But it is designed to be mixed. So we'll throw a little bit in there. Put that down. And I've not bought a can of Coca-Cola for a long time. Let's see how this goes. Cheers. I think it's made it taste worse. <clears throat> um, that plasticky thing I was talking about comes out in droves when you mix it. Um, I've not drank a mixed whiskey for a long time. I tend to drink whiskey straight no matter where I am. Um, obviously, drink it however you want, that's the most important thing. I don't. I rarely drink whiskey with ice. I will add water during reviews, not for this because it's only 40%. But, um, it's not a fun taste at all. I don't like that. It drank better straight. But, I mean, Coca Cola works well with vanilla flavoured products anyway, you know, there's some natural vanillins in there. Jack Daniels and Coke is awesome. Um, I think Jack Daniels and Coke got me into whiskey. Jack Daniels and Coke and Johnny Walker Black Label. Yeah, I, I don't like the idea of mixing that. That's not because I'm a snob, I just think the flavours don't match very well. Um, so that's Hay Club. That's my score. And yeah, give it a go. Give it a try. It's obviously quite a controversial product for people who are big into whiskey. But if you like it, that's fine. Don't let anyone judge you because you like it. I'm being honest here. If you buy a bottle of that and you drink it and you love it, awesome, enjoy, you know, don't let anyone, for want of a better phrase, take the piss out of you for it. This thing, I get the feeling that people will buy it, they'll finish it, and I don't think they'll buy another bottle. I think they'll probably go, okay, what's next? So I've had that. What's the next step up? And they might buy the regular one. Uh, if you buy the regular one, sorry. If you go to the next one, you know, they're kind of like, okay, I've had two hay clubs. What about Balvenie? Highland Park. What about Benfield 12 year old, which is a stunning standardised bottle? What about Johnny Walker Black? What about Johnny Walker Red? All these kind of things. Um, it's kind of in reference to that blended video. I don't think it's the greatest jumping off point. I think it's a nice stepping stone from other spirits into whiskey, but I think there are also other spirits that do that very well as well. You know, you can get barrel aged gin, you can get barrel aged vodka. Rum. Rum's a great one. Old rum. You know, sort of like 12 years and above 
has a lot of typical kind of like sherry cast things going on with it. It's rich and it's spicy and it's nutty and it's decadent. Um, for 18 quid, it tastes like 18 quid. But it will never sit on my shelf, sadly. So Craig, I'll be giving this back to you. Um, and I will finish that because I'm not one to waste any whiskey product, but I will get down. So that's Hey Club Clubman. And there you go. That's that review. So I'm not sure, like I said, if this goes out on a Wednesday or a Monday, but you will see this nonetheless. Uh, leave some feedback. Have you tried it? Have you enjoyed it? If so, awesome. If you haven't, tell me why. You know, get your feelings out. It's what being a whiskey lover is all about. But yes, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. See you around.